Thank you for tuning back in to learn more about the NRF's Historic Structures Report at the William Vernon House. We are thrilled to have engaged a very experienced and extremely dedicated group of consultants to help us learn about the property. We're deploying all the tools at our disposal from infrared thermography to paint analysis to exploratory openings to really uncover all the stories that this house has to tell us. Okay, so, oh sorry, um, go to the right by four inches, right there. Okay. Infrared thermography is a non-destructive method of identifying conditions that exist behind the walls of a house. It can be used to detect things like the presence of moisture or assess plumbing elements, but in the case of the Vernon house, we're using it to identify structural elements. Here, the temperature differential between the wooden elements, like the studs and the braces, and the plaster that makes up the walls, helps our structural engineer and architectural historian better understand how the house was constructed. This information is being used to develop architectural drawings of the house that will become part of the final report. We are architectural conservators and historians and architects. We are also interested in you know, what was, in fact, the story behind this place. We're trying to sort of look at all the pieces and parts so we can understand the whole in a way that helps protect it and, and share it. To the right half inch, there you go. The whole attic would have been finished like this. The interior walls uh, may have had, were, were, were plastered uh, going out into the hallway, but uh, the other walls under the roof uh, were not. What we're seeing on the floor here is one of the beams that tied the front of the building to the back of the building called the tie beam, which also supported the floor joists, which are the floor joists and then this tie beam. It's, it's hewn, but you'll see on its surface a number of very interesting marks carved both into the beam and then into the top of each joist. Building of structures generally occurred off-site, particularly in a city like this. These are marks that allowed the house rights to match the pieces that they cut at their yard to where they are supposed to be uh, here in the building. We just uh, pulled off the baseboard that was uh, against this wall. What we see on the bottom is before a wooden baseboard was applied sometime in the later 18th century, what's called a mop board, the black mop board was painted on. Uh, the walls would have been whitewashed, and then this black mop board was painted, and it was carried across the bottom of the post. We're trying to understand what was the original uh, form of the building, what was its finish, and then when and how was it transformed through the centuries. The documentary record tells us uh, uh, Reverend Ezra Stiles of the Congregational Church, Second Congregational Church, just a few doors down on Clark Street, drew a map of Newport in 1758, and he designated each building with a certain symbol and a number. And this was designated as a two-story building with a central chimney. Right now it has two chimneys in a big central hallway where the chimney used to be, so that we know until 1758, there was only one chimney, and this chimney and the one in the room across the hall only went in after 1759. That's when Metcalf Bowler purchased the property from his father, and that's when he added the other half of this building. The evidence here in the attic is very important. Sort of right in front of me is where the central chimney came through from below. Uh, but when we exposed, pulled up some of the floorboards and exposed it, this beam, for example, shows the scar of a staircase that descended here and then turned a corner that way, probably around the chimney stack. What we're learning is, is that the history of this building is much more complex with many different iterations, uh, phases of improvement and change that occurred over the years. The Newport Restoration Foundation is so grateful to all the generous funders that are supporting this project because without them, the stories of the Vernon House would remain undiscovered and untold.